Dave Canterbury's. An eel skin I could totally use to make a fishing lure. Oh, that was disgusting. Well, what do you think? There he is. That is lovely. Oh, bon appetit. I'm Zachary Fowler, and this is the seven day island survival challenge. For the next seven days, this island's all mine. To build, to create. I hope this works. To have adventure on. Yeehaw. <laughs> and to catch and cook as many unique things no as I can come up with. Smoke eel sushi in the outdoors. Good morning. It was raining when I woke up, so I uh, went back to bed for a little bit, but now it's looking pretty darn sharp out there. Let's uh, get out there and have some adventure. Oh yeah, looks to be a nice day. Wake up in the morning in this great blue state. Golden fingers caress my face. Slips through the window on a silky breeze. A dreamer's life to plant some seed. Is there wild chickens out here? I don't think I dare to test that one. No, I'm not gonna eat that. 100 year old egg? How's my fish doing? Oh yeah, look at that. That's what I was hoping for. Fly eggs. Now, I have something to start my maggot farm with for catching small fish. Huh? Maybe even big fish. All the sirens calling, both leave their trees. But a peace pervades us, and the dreamers dream. From every element of pace, every color this it takes. She paints pictures blue and green, and I release them to the sea. For the ancient memories, just as fleeting as the breeze. She paints pictures blue and green, and I release them to the
can't quite decide what to build first. Like a table or something. But first, first is making some coffee. I got my coffee pot back. I've had this thing for, oh, years and years. And when I first bought it at a garage sale for a dollar, the top was broken. And, uh, and somebody else gave me one, Malcolm, uh, Hidden Woodsman gave me one, uh, other, everybody else has given me one, and they never work very well. But this one always worked perfectly. I think it's because the ratio of, you know, perk pot to this thing is the same diameter as the bottom is. And it's got a big flat flange on there, so it doesn't have to boil at like 110 and burn the ever-loving daylights out of your coffee. Whereas all the new ones that you buy at camping stores for the most part, are uh, garbage they have you know the circle on the inside of the bottom of your pot is this big but they the piece itself is you know like that big around so it's like there's all this extra boiling water that's just boiling and turbulent and it's not doing anything whereas this one it's stuck right to the bottom nice and cleanly and a littlest bit of a boil and bloop, 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 you got it going and now I took one of the other ones that somebody had given me I think it was actually Malcolm's or maybe one I bought and I dremeled the top and screwed in a new top on it's not the glass top like I found at a uh, another garage sale that I screwed in it was just a little water uh, just a little teeny glass bottle and I had it forever until somebody uh, took it and washed it and was like clunk and it popped out and broke it of course I wouldn't have such a hard time squatting like this all the time if I spent less time in the office, more time out in the outdoors. It is so, so muggy. Everything feels sticky. And those squeaky bugs are doing their thing. My least favorite weather to ever have to live through. Dry, hot, like it was earlier this summer, all summer long. Beautiful. Well, sweat and feel good something about the muggy just makes me feel kind of clammy kind of almost like you're like almost like you're sick are you okay because you're sweating pretty profusely yeah no I'm fine give me fall give me winter give me snow give me cold of course I say that and I've never actually been to a tropical island so, I have to do that someday. Find out if it's as bad down there as I think it is in that hot region down south. What you doing in there, Mr. Spider? You're gonna wanna get out of that coffee pot. Takes a little bit of skill to have a coffee pot like that over the fire without burning up the plastic handle for that many years. At least 20, I think. Yeah, all right, coffee time. Oh, that's nice. All right, before we go any further with today's adventure, I'd like to introduce you to today's sponsor, Grim Workshop. I'm gonna save this one for after I'm out of here. I've already ruined that one, so I'll save this for my clean day shirt after. But the shirt's so cool, there's pockets in here. So those of you who don't know, Grimm makes the coolest gizmos and gadgets.
a whole assortment of cool things to play with for today's adventure. And these are some little waterproof boxes or whatever to keep your cards in. So they make survival cards. They make my signature survival card as well as, oh jeepers, all kinds of other stuff. Dog tag survival cards, tweezer and sewing needle card, uh, spear uh, frog gigging type card or something. Maybe we can use that later. I have seen a couple frogs in here. This would be a good thing. A little sewing with buttons and uh, everything on that one. The zipper pulls. So it's got, you know, you got your hooks. You can put that on a zipper pull or on a little clasp. This is one that we've kind of dreamed up together years ago. Uh, it's just a dental floss card. But I was like, I want one of these so that we can use this for uh, fishing line. So you can keep it in your wallet with your fishing survival card, which there are tons of different fishing variations of fishing survival cards now. This one's got a casting thing on it. We'll mess around with some of these today, especially. They got a card for lures. I use this one in the Rockies to catch a, catch a big old uh, cutthroat. Yes, all right. All right, grim hooks work. So we'll use that today to catch a fish. These are lock picks. I haven't actually used this yet, but just for this video, we're gonna cut to a clip of that. So I bought one of these clear locks like four or five years ago, always hoping to become a little bit more extra MacGyver. The whole point is you can see those pins in there and it helps you with your beginner lock picking. For my first try, I just went at it. I haven't watched a YouTube video on it or anything recently, and I read a chapter about lock picking a long time ago. I messed with it for about 20 minutes and I had to watch a YouTube video on it and I got it in about five minutes after watching the video. It's actually scarily easy. Now I'll have to see if I can do it with a real lock that I can't see through. Well, they even said some of my favorite fire starters, credit card size that they include with their stuff. The, uh, that's what actually started the fire with this morning, not even realizing and putting the two together that uh, these would be in here. I always have one of these in my wallet. Dave Canterbury's signature card right there. And I would never, ever recommend anyone do this. To that black powder. Go. It's got the hooks, the lures. Let's see if we can catch some stuff on all these later. So Grim has been with me for pretty much forever, right from the beginning. Uh, the first like trade show I went to it was um, Expo of some sort. The History Channel sent me to to speak. At uh, I ran into Grim and uh, Wazoo there, and both of them set me up with some gear, and we've been friends ever since. They send me out new stuff, and we built my uh, signature survival card with Grim, and uh, two different versions of that available now. And I, I love their stuff. I have so much fun. It makes me feel like MacGyver, you know, kind of an arrowhead spear type thing. That one's neat. All right, fire starter, frog spear. Canterbury's fishing card. This one's got some neat stuff on it. Some finer hooks, but what I really like is the net needle. And I need to make a net so that I can, uh, I'll put that right here, whose signature card that is. I need to make a net so that I can hang my dead stuff as a maggot feeder. And uh, so the maggots drop off into the water, attract some fish, I can use the maggots to hook onto them and uh, hook on to some small fish and catch myself more dinner. Well, I got just so much space on one person. I already have, when I loaded my belt before this adventure, a couple of the grim things in my belt. A small zipper pull cordage card that I modified to uh, make fishing line. So if you're at all interested in gadgets and gizmos that work and are really fun to play with and in some ways can challenge you to do new and neater and more creative things, check out that link in the description below for our friends at Grimm. You can go over there, make sure you subscribe to their mailing list. They do a Kickstarters, they're always inventing new stuff. That's one of my favorite things about them. Like, I don't know, four or five times a year they invent something new, they do a product launch on Kickstarter. So if you join their mailing list, you'll be sure to hear about it and you can get it on the ground floor and get it for cheaper than it will be for sale later. And, uh, I think that pretty much covers it. I'm gonna have my coffee and uh, some quiet time. So check out those three most important links in the description below. Gear video, if you've been wondering about something I haven't mentioned in the video, there's a link down there in each one of the videos for the gear video. It's got the breakdown of everything I brought with me. 
the playlist for the seven day island survival challenge. So if you want to start from the beginning and today's sponsor, Grim Workshop. I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. Dear Diary, it's so hot out here. It reminds me of an old Chinese proverb. I think it went something like, from the windows to the wall, as the sweat drips down my forehead or something like that. Ugh, I don't know why that's on my mind. It's just so hot I can't think straight. I wonder if I couldn't bushcraft an AC unit. What would that take? I suppose I would just be a fan though. Gotta deal with my eel. It's gonna be hard, I gotta skin it. Oh, there's my hook. If I don't deal with it now, the flies and stuff will get to it. I've had it covered up in the bucket and uh, it hasn't gotten messed up yet. But I need to get it on the smoke on the fire. I was gonna have it kind of for a breakfast thing, but I think I'm gonna go with a, like smoking it for a couple days and that way I can use it, uh, it'll get good and smoked, good and flavored. Now, getting the skin off of these can be a pain in the neck, and I might have already cut its head too much for this to be convenient and work well. Not to mention, I don't have a pair of pliers, and that's the best way to do it. I'm gonna pair use the Grim tweezers. So I'm gonna take advantage of that little serration. It's on the both of them. I put those together and see if I can't use that to pinch the skin once I cut around a little bit. It's actually giving me a really good grip on the skin. The other thing I remembered and the reason I decided not to do the sushi for breakfast is eels are one of those little hair bone type things. Lots of little bones. They're not like that fun to eat. My tweezers are doing their thing with the heads ripping off. That's part of my bigger problem right now. <clears throat> Ah, got it. <laughs> One stripped eel. And an eel skin I could totally use to make a fishing lure and catch something catch another one cuz bass love that eel skin. I caught a giant bass and an eel somehow. Oh, I see what happened. I caught the eel, and the bass came along and chowed it. I'm just gonna gut it a little bit, get the get the guts out of her, and then put it on to smoke. Smoke that till it's uh, edible, completely edible, without having to take all the bones out and stuff, and then chop her up and put it into some smoked eel sushi rolls. That'll be good. Build a quick smoking tripod. Nothing too complicated. Smoking any fish really adds a lot to it. If you have to eat fish plain, but you can smoke it for a number of hours, you'd be surprised how much flavor you get out of it. There we go, that's pretty cool. 
Uh, it'll keep enough smoke onto it while I'm gone. I'll put a bunch more water around it. That way it smolders, the smoke comes up, the flies don't get to it, smoke keeps getting onto it, it keeps doing its long smoking process. If you look closely here, you can see I use rotten punky wood. It's extremely wet from the night before's rain and so is everything else around here. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this. Rotten wood and green wood will smoke if you don't put too much on and not flame up. I have a lot of experience with this living in a reed bamboo hut for 87 days with an open fire. So don't try this at home unless you got that kind of credentials. And it'll be safe enough while I'm just over here doing a little bit of fishing for something to eat right now. Cause I'm getting hungry. So we better go, uh, go do that. Just gotta reel in my line from this morning. I didn't really think that was gonna work. I just, I was lazy. I didn't wanna change out the hook. Oh, ha <laughs> ha, something hit it right when I was reeling it in. That was funny. Let's see what we can find for fish today. I think I'll head back up the river to where that, uh, that beaver lodge is. I saw a lot of little, little sunfish, you know, small things like that. Wow, this is just like almost undescribably beautiful. It's like hard to, hard to say, just being able to see down into the water. Oh, big old bass right there. <laughs> Turtle, frog or turtle. But there's some big old snapping turtles in here too. That chain pickerel. Yep, small chain pickerel. I can make something out of this. Turn that into a lure. Plug. Now that'd be a cool grim card. If there was one that had, you know, so you can take a wooden plug like this and stick something over it, but thread, thread in the hooks. I wonder if one of these ones I have has some unique way I could do that with. Glad I brought some water with me. Single hooks. Let's see the fishing. Am I gonna fish this without the poles? Yeah, possibly. I almost want some really long hooks to lash to it. All right, I think I'll use some of these from Dave Canterbury's cart. I like these bigger hooks. I'll have to use some sinkers from my own stuff to see if I can't bring that eel down. But that might work to our advantage too, because it might pull it down and then the plug floats up, and I'll. Boop, boop, boop. Oh man, fish are gonna love this. Oh yeah, look at the size of that hook. That is, you, ow, that's sharp. Man, I just can't help but like cut myself on everything out here right now. Yeah, put some blood on the hook, get some scent in the water. <laughs> I'll go with two hooks, kind of trebled up by taking these bigger hooks and hanging those from the bigger hook like that. So now it's a homemade treble, each one of them. Now how to fasten the hooks and stuff to this. If I put the skin on this first, I won't be able to get the hooks onto it. If I don't put the hooks on this first, I won't be able to get the hooks on. two eyes to tie onto. There we go. I had to bend it open a little bit and then I just gotta pound it in. Oh, that's biting into there really good. All right, then I'll make it go that way so as it slides down the skin, I can poke that back through and it'll tie onto that. Let's put a second one on here. Now my plug has two 
pies. <laughs> All right, now we got the yucky eel skin. Ew, it's making squeaky noises. Or is that something nearby? This is not easy. I could just blow and it'll pop out. Let's see. Ugh, I'm gonna put my mouth to this. <laughs> oh, that was disgusting. <clears throat> There's other gooey bits in there. I don't know what that was. Maybe some guts. Or maybe there's still some of it inside out. Oh yeah, there was still a bunch more there. There's quite a lot of it. All right, now stick the plug in. Here we go, that was a good idea. A little bit of wet on it. It just slips right in there, sort of. some tail so it's like that through the water but if this works I think it's gonna work I think they're gonna hit it will I get a hook set or will I just make a mess of it and blow it all apart because you only get one or two chances on this thing tie it onto the head this is crazy That feels pretty solid. I think we're ready to catch a fish. We just gotta add the trebles, or the duels to turn them into trebles. Well, what do you think? I think it's gonna work. You gotta fish it. Fish it real good. I'm gonna put this up the line, this little sinker here. Kind of a action. See if she catches fish. Give her a quick test right here, see how she swims. Oh yeah, the sinker pulls her down. Here we go. Fire one. That was weeds. red-eared sunfishes and stuff in here. I think we'll just give that a go. That we can do. I'll do a little hand lining. And yeah, we'll use the, the floss card. Why not? There's a lot in this floss card. Man, there's a lot of little fish in here. Swivel, or spinny thing. I bet you if I give it a little twist, it'll spin the water, create some activity. I'm gonna thread on one of these little spoon-like things. And then, we'll tie on a hook. And I just tied a, kind of a, a loop. Anytime you go through these little 
survival card things. They need just a wee bit more than than to run through there once because they're kind of sharp a little bit sometimes. Let's see what that looks like in the water. Oh yeah, <laughs> there we go, ah, there we go, a little red-eared sunfish, that didn't take more than a, a cast or two, we'll try some more of these, and then uh, at least we'll have something like that for dinner, we can get a whole pile of these, those will make a beautiful meal. Another one. <laughs> there we go. Two. Oh. He's on the loose. Oh, he's gonna jump out of the boat. He's a feisty one. Not if I have something to say about it. Oh, that's not a, oh, that's a bass. Try to ease him in. <laughs> All right, let him fight. Let him fight. Not into the weeds. No, 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 no. Even if it means I lose you. Oh. Did I get him? Ah, I got him. <laughs> that is about the same size as what I got yesterday. All right. I'll take it. Yes. Just on that little hook. A little hook and, and a piece of worm. We've been at it long enough today that i got other things I want to do. Another fish for the bucket. I'm going to catch as many and eat as much as I possibly can tonight. Yesterday I didn't eat that much. Got a little bass. I've seen a bigger one come out right after it. You're going back. I got a two bass limit per day. If that big guy comes back, I want that. Another tiny bass. Ugh, just catching them left and right here with the, uh, the hooks and worms. Oh, there's a big one right in front of me. That's like a five pounder. Holy cow, there's no way I can land that. There's no way I can land this. Try the eel. interested he just doesn't want to commit so big oh he hit it he hit it and I didn't set the hook he's right there he's all about it he's like oh I want that this will be my PB if I can hook this guy he's uh, I think I lost his interest and he moved off after that last hit he tasted something funny. There he is. There he is. That's... Alright. Let him run it out. Let him run it out. Oh, I lost him. Darn. He was pulling me. Look at this. Pulling me all around and everything. This dental floss uh, for line is definitely used in emergencies only kind of thing. That lasted for two fish and three hits. Oh, 
Oh, don't get stuck in the weeds. There we go. My goodness, is that the beaver? Ooh, there's a good one. Don't lose him. There's a really nice one. Oh, I lost him. Darn. Another one. Oh, this one's little. Wasn't the one I, well, no, that's not so bad. I'll take it. They both seem to think you got to catch a certain type of fish to have an enjoyable meal, but man. They all have a wonderful flavor to me. They are perfect. Oh. Is that a snapping turtle? Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> I could have caught that snapping turtle with my feet. <laughs> Don't think I'd want to. All right, better head back. Oh, I got plenty of fish for dinner. Although I burned up most of the day. Uh, messing with this stuff. <sighs> Home, sweet home. All right. And the victorious hunter returns home with his bucket full of little fishes. <laughs> what did I get anyways? Five, uh, the little red-eared sunfish, and one smaller bass. Not too shabby for just uh, rocking some survival cars. I'm pretty psyched. That'll uh, add up to quite a bit of food, actually. Yeehaw. Looking pretty dry. And there's no flies or anything. Still some good heat here. I can just restart the fire. Cool. Now that I started breeding flies over there for my fish attractor slash catching fish, flies want to get on my fresh fish. Oh, trash, perfect. And boom, I can use those.
I even got a little thing for my bucket sink. So much for going to bed early. It's 10 o'clock at night. That's crazy. Well, now I can cook a feast, eat, and go to bed. I've been doing pretty good on the mosquitoes. They stand off of me. I've got my new signature bug dope. I joined up with Copper John's and uh, it it's uh, organic. So you had to put it on more often, but I also have a wax one for waterproofing and keeping ticks off. And I put it on the hat and man, I haven't had a problem, but one or two every so often. And I can hear them buzzing all around. Red three standing by. Red six standing by. Red nine standing by. I'm so excited about that. I hate the DEET. I hate the bug dope. I, if you guys have been watching me for a while, it's like, sometimes you just gotta put it on, but I hate to do it. Uh, most of the time, I'd rather just be bit and have some scratch for the next couple days. So let's do up these fish. Oh, I'm gonna flay them up on this without having to use my cutting board. I really don't want to do that. Oh, that's way better than yesterday. That's nice. Hmm. Oh, I'm looking around like, what do I, do? what do I do with my fishy hand? Oh, butter. Clean it up. <laughs> if you didn't guess, I'm tickled with my own creativity. Tackle box, lid, plastic. It's perfect for this. It's like a plastic cutting board. It already smells fishy. It can't get any worse. And I can always clean it off tomorrow. Perfect faux lays. Boom. One fish nugget ready to be el cucoed. filet o fish Oh yeah. Well, not a bad day, too. feel like I got done as much as I wanted to get done. Clean up my fire. I'm going to have nothing to cook on. Turn up the heat. Alright. Fish tacos. Here we come. Oh, I love my table. This is so cool. This is so much better having a table. Here we go. That should be enough to sprinkle it on. Well, maybe not all of them. Oh, I love this knife. This is a little harder cutting stuff with my finger being all messed up. I normally push my this index finger against the back of the blade, and that's my guide. And these fingers right here, they scooch out the vegetables. So I'm running the blade across this knuckle and I come up sometimes and the blade is right at the top of my, it's at my fingernail and the, the blade just barely passes without touching my finger, or cutting my finger off, down my fingernail without touching the fingernail, without the sharp part of the blade that is like really close. Like every once in a while if I get really carried away, like once a year or something like that when I'm cutting like this, I'll feel like a, like as if I just shaved it down the side of my fingernail because I drew the blade up, got carried away and drew the blade up too high. Because I can cut all these with my eyes closed right now. Like I cut this tomato. Just kidding. Without uh, looking because of the way I do it. Riding the blade, the, the side of the, the side right there, about there, about right there against the knuckle right here on my knuckle. I watch other people with their thumb out there and chopping close to their thumb just with no guide whatsoever. The hand and the knife are one. Eh? And the hand, the other hand, you must protect it 
Mm. Yeah, you must cut only the onion. Mm. Mm. Yes. Not me. <laughs> yes. Ta-da! It's just like, ah, oh, scary to watch. I love cooking for people. That's why doing the YouTube videos is kind of cool because it's like I'm getting to cook for you guys all the time. Making videos, cooking for you, being creative. Any chance I get to make something, whether it's cooking, cooking or building or doing whatever. Making, it's making. Making makes me happy. A little purple headed cabbage. Very important for fish tacos. I don't know why, but it is. Adds that little bit of crunch or something about it. Now the trick with the cabbage part though, is it can be disgusting if you do something wrong. You're going for light, thin, thin little slices. So you gotta get it on there and be consistent about the thickness of a penny or a dime. You just want confetti to go on basically strips of confetti. Now, last but not least, the mango. I keep feeling like somebody's gonna leave it in the comments because I'm thinking it too. Like, oh, that's cross contamination. How don't you get sick? But like, I washed my hands and I'm not using the same knife as I did on the fish, but in my head, I feel like and I didn't use the same cutting board, so. Leave it if you want to. I've never gotten sick on an adventure. Um, other people have. I do not know how this is gonna go. Is there wild, wild chickens chicken out here? Down here? Just kinda work the fish around in there with the egg. One of my favorite. Panko. Pork grind panko. I'll just flop the fish into this. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. I'll throw some of this aces. I guess I got some moisture in it. <laughs> oh yeah, this is working great. There. Just gotta get this pan a rinse. It's all nicely, nicely brown. And the bass ones are kind of big. The other ones are perfect. That is lovely. One fish per fish taco. Now I can put all my fixings in them. A little slice of mango. Great. I'll just go like this. There we go. What? What? Oh, unbelievable! Basil. Boom, boom, boom. Some onion. Oh yeah, some cabbage. <gasps> no sour cream. No! Oh, this is awful. And tomatoes on top. Is there room in one of these for another piece of mango? The final touch, the hot sauce. A little bit on each one. Oh my goodness. Oh, bon appetit. Thank you for this meal, for the adventure, for the opportunities you provide to spend in your outdoors. In Jesus' name, amen. Mmm. That is so good. So good. That is good.
Oh yeah. All those tomatoes and vegetables and that crispy fried up fish with that just slight bacony porky flavor that mmm. I think I like the sunfish ones better because they're smaller so you got a lot more crisp per fish ratio whereas the bass is a big old chunk of fish with all this other stuff on top of it which isn't bad either <clears throat> anyways I'm gonna bag these up take a dip and tuck it in for the night I think oh beaver oh beaver Oh, beaver, I'm coming in. Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh. Woo! Woo! Oh, that feels better. Oh. Million bucks. Well. All right. In for the night. I missed my fan. It's so muggy out. I mean, those of you that are down south probably laughing at me if I told you how hot it actually is. I wish I had caught that fish on that eel lure. That was so close. He was just cruising around, just chowing like, you know, small bluegill. Get in my belly! But tomorrow, high adventure. We're gonna fish for salmon and get an airdrop from Mystery Tackle Box. Check out those links in the description below and I will see you guys on day three. Thanks for watching. Fowler out.